The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day after the market close. Tom takes your phone calls from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time using the data available at that time. Let's go to Glenn in Massachusetts. Hey, Glenn, what's going on? You know what is good for us is Tom O'Brien providing an unbiased source of information for us investors. You don't have an agenda. It's just to cut through everything and to give us the facts. I want to thank you. No, I appreciate it, man. And now, here's Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. Well, five days a week we go, two hours a day we go, 24 hours a day on the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day out there, safe day. Let's make it a great night. We have one heck of a storm in Florida, folks. It's been pretty amazing last, uh, yeah, last uh, 12, 13 hours here. Let's take a look at one of our four agreements. Create new agreements based on love and respect. Take the responsibility to make new agreements with those you love. If an agreement doesn't work, change the agreement and create a new one. Use your imagination to explore all the possibilities. Bottom line, folks, you can make any type of agreement you want. If you don't like it, change it again and make it work. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow down 30, NASDAQ up 4, S&P's off 2.5, gold contract up $10, trading at 1,434 an ounce. Silver up 11 cents at $37.63. Platinum flat at 1,770 an ounce. Copper up a penny at 4.28 a pound. Late sweet crude up 235, trading out at 106.62 a barrel. Bonds flat at 120.03. Dollar index. Down 17 ticks, trading at 76.18. Euro, up 4 ticks at 141.77. Yen, up 26 ticks at 83.15. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world. In the world of the S&P, let's take a look. And this is what we have. You get to 13.29 out here today. Not enough juice uh, behind the move. We did eight, uh, 1 billion shares. You're going into that 1.3 billion. Um, it's going to be tough to get up and over that bottom line. You know, took market took a little break. I suspect that, yeah, you'll probably try to get into this 1331 uh, once again. That's your S&P. Dow Industrials, you get the same setup in the Dow. What the Dow did is this. Dow got to the price point out here today of uh, the 12,381 level. Uh, yesterday was 12,383. That high out there that it was trying to tag and is trying to tag, folks, is the 12,391 level uh, from the 18th of February. The composite, NASDAQ composite. So what we did with the composite out here today, you get to a price point in the composite of 2783. That 2783, it uh, got over the highs of yesterday, which is the 2779. You closed the 2781. Um, you did 1.8 billion. You're going into that downdraft out there from the 22nd, which was 2.495 billion, a billion. So it's going to need a lot more juice in order to get up into those levels. We go to the NDX 100. Now the NDX 100, folks, um, today was up two points. Now what was putting juice into the NDX was Oracle, Google, Qualcomm, and First Solar. Taking it away was Microsoft, eBay, Intel, and Broadcom. Uh, bottom line is that we go take a look at that NDX 100, and what you have is this. She closed at 23.38. The highest day was 23.40. She's going to need a lot more juice also to get up and over that. Uh, Apple, we take a look at Apple. Uh, ba basically, Apple was flat out here again this morning. Uh, what was interesting is this. Apple actually gapped down this morning. Uh, didn't hold that gap, though. It, it had opened up uh, at 3.46 where yesterday it had closed out at the uh, 348.63, uh, closed out today at 348.50. Uh, still uh, still no uh, real selling in Apple. That's the bottom line. Now, the bottom of the consolidation in Apple is that 326.26 mark. But, uh, you know, we've been down there twice. Uh, the first time we were down there was on the 18th of January. Uh, the stock goes from 344 to 326. Does it with uh, 67 million shares? It goes topside, hits topside, 
Three sixty four with seventeen million. What does it do? Comes all the way back down to three twenty six with forty one million again. That's it's building cars to go break through those levels. That's what it's doing, folks. Now, gold market. Let's go to the gold market out here. Uh, what we're dealing with here, folks. Uh, we're dealing with the June contract now in gold. Uh, GCM. Now, what gold did out here today is this. He did one hundred sixteen thousand contracts. That little baby still doesn't have enough juice to get up and over. Uh, what it's dealing with. And what you're dealing with is this. Well, let's go all the way back to November 9th. See, that was the first, November 9th was the first high. That was 4, 1430. So you're at 1435. You're over that. Second high, what is it? Well, gold went from 1430 then down to 1330. 100 bucks. Well, it goes all the way back, comes up back to 1436. You, you get up there, that had uh, 225,000 contracts. That's going to be a hard one to basically. Get over and stay over. That's the one. That's one of the large ones you're dealing with. We went back down uh, over. Couldn't handle that one at fourteen thirty six. Get on to thirteen ten. Gold come all the way back top side to fourteen forty seven. What we did out here today is one hundred sixteen thousand contracts, and she's going to need two twenty five, two fifty in order to launch all those areas. Now, if we go over to the GLD and you take a look at the GLD, this is what you have inside the GLD. Uh, we did 15 million shares today. Uh, that 15 million is dealing with 26 million and dealing with 39 million. You can see you need a lot more volume, a lot more acceleration to get up and over them. Uh, the GLD had opened at the highs today and uh, basically sold off slightly from those highs. Bond market. We had with the bonds out here, we had some uh, activity in the bond market out here today, big time. Price spread. We had a price spread out there from 119.23 to 120.31. 120.31. We did 382,000 contracts. Now, this is what you have, which is pretty wild, is that the bond market, the 30-year, wants to run into this 123.22 mark. Um, we had volume up there of 531,000 contracts. What do we do today? Volume expanded by about 100,000 contracts. You didn't break the low. You actually broke the downtrend small-term downtrend that the bonds have been in since March 16th. Bonds have been basically trending higher, meaning yields lower, principles higher, from the 9th of February. We're 9th of February, folks. We're down at 115.07. Uh, it gets all the way up to 123, first leg. Um, that's a big ABC. That's what it looks like. That's eight points. You take that eight points on top of the 119, uh, you're coming up with that 127. So that 127 is a big number. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. And we go over to the uh, Federal Reserve. Uh, Federal Reserve today did release the um, discount window. They had lost that case uh, in the Supreme Court. They actually lost the case in the, uh, the New York court. Uh, but uh, the Supreme Court uh, wouldn't take their case, so they had to come up with the documents. Uh, that's the $3.7 trillion that they were loaning out. Um, you can go over to the Fed site and you'll see uh, those papers. Um, inside, I just, you know, I, I breezed through the, a few of them. Uh, bottom line is that uh, you had Citigroup, J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, Goldman Sachs, they were out there hand over fist, um, you know, basically getting the free money. No, no two ways about it. Um, the Citigroup was actually one of the biggest ones. January 09, just in one week alone, they... Uh, uh, took down $53.2 billion. Nothing like it, too, right? Imagine that, folks. Uh, you know, well, we know it. I mean, the bottom line is that you get free money, uh, you get bailed out. And, and bailed out specifically, folks, is this, is that when you don't have a cash flow and you're out of business, bottom line is that they not only, the Fed not only saved them, they put them back in business. Uh, and the amazing part, of course, is that uh, what do their books look like right now? You know, yesterday we were talking about uh, well, actually, we started talking about Berkshire Hathaway last Monday. Uh, this Monday. It's Thursday already. And what had happened Monday is that uh, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, their balance sheets that they send into the SEC, what I had brought up is that their balance sheets, basically, they were not taking a mark-to-market loss on their balance sheets. And specifically, what that means, folks, is that if a stock is trading at a certain price, on their balance sheet, they have the price that they actually bought the stock, not the loss that is incurred, even though it's a paper loss. Well, bottom line is that if we just look at Wells Fargo, so WFC, on their balance sheet, 
inside Wells Fargo, they had a $383 million loss that they refused to take. They pushed back to the SEC, saying no. They said specifically, SEC come back to them and say, hey, yeah, you've got to change this balance sheet. They, come, they went back to the SEC, no, no, we don't, because we think that Wells Fargo is worth that much money. Well, what is really intriguing here is this. Just picture Wells Fargo themselves are not mocking their bad securities to market also. So imagine, and my partner Steve brought this up when I brought when I was bringing it up yesterday, he texted me. And so you can imagine, if first off, if Wells Fargo had a market to market. Then you can imagine, of course, Berkshire Hathaway. Okay, if they didn't market to market. My point is, is this. If you or I went into their insurance company with our balance sheet and we had losses, do you think they'd give us insurance? End of story. At the close yesterday, you had uh, Sokol, which was uh, one of uh, Buffett's uh, right-hand uh, guys, uh, turn around. He resigned. In fact, the, the news uh, before that was Sokol was the one who was going to take over uh, Warren Buffett. Bottom line is that um, they're all claiming, they're all out there claiming today, folks, okay, that there's no inside trading, that there's nothing going on. Bottom line is that Sokol's the one that brought the deal to Buffett, um, and bottom line, you had $3 million made in two weeks. Now, that is not the end. That, that certainly is not going to be the end of the story. Sokol was smart coming out in CNBC this morning, fighting for his life. No doubt about that. And what he was doing, saying, "Hey, I didn't do anything wrong and all that." You know, bottom line, you know, we'll see where it shakes out. But my point is this: is that these companies, folks, you got to keep their feet to the fire because it's all over the place. It's not just you know, it's all over the place. I mean, and you know, in in the art of timing the trade, my new book. Uh, there's there's one part of it uh, talking about operators, and I actually there's a quote in there saying, "Do you think that Warren Buffett comes out and says things because he wants you to know?" Of course he doesn't. He comes out and says things because he's an operator that he wants to move markets. That's the bottom line. Okay, and the quicker that you understand that, the better off you're going to be. You know, so where this is going to shake out, uh, end result, you know, we'll see. Uh, but if you go back uh, in another story that got absolutely thrown uh, under the bus and, you know, well, actually Buffett threw his CEO of General Re under the bus about three years ago. And you go hunt that story and it'll blow your mind because that story there uh, is a whole different animal, meaning that, uh, you know, they took this guy to the cleaners. 877-927-6648. Let's go to uh, Stephen in Tampa. Hey, Stephen, what's going on? Hey, Tom, how's it going? I wish I could make that kind of money in two weeks like those guys, huh? Yeah, that's, you know, I I think, uh, well, you know, it's interesting. It, it's, in one way, Buffett is really just about untouchable. Um, right. And, you know, the, the, the reason, it's interesting, I, I, went, into, I went into my cousin, uh, and I, yeah, I said, man, I can't believe this. And, you know, he came up with it. It's, it's a fact. I says, man, this guy's untouchable. Now, the, the fact is that he really is untouchable because the the... You know, in the financial downdraft, of course, where did the Treasury go to bail out banks? Well, they went to Warren Buffett. So what are they going to do? You know what I mean? They're all dead. Yeah. But you, but you know what? Uh, the other guy that just resigns not untouchable. Yeah, you know? somebody's got to pay, right? So yeah. That's the guy. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's right. That's... Yeah. There's, it's, you know, we'll, we'll see how it shakes out. But it's, I think he was... He was he was definitely smart to go out in front of it in CNBC this morning and fight for his life, no doubt about it. You stay right there, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. This is TFNN. We had the Dow finish uh, down 30 Nasdaq up four. S&P's off two and a half. We're coming right back, folks.